What up YouTube, Salvador Brigman here, and today I'm showing you step three as to how to create your own crowdfunding website. So I've put out two other videos on this topic talking about how to install WordPress, all of these other different things. Today we're actually gonna empower, we're going to enable the crowdfunding functionality. So in order to do this, we're gonna be using the Ignition Deck WordPress uh, framework and plugin. So right now, you can see they have a few different products here. I'm using the Echelon package for Ignition Deck. You can see here I have the crowdfunding functionality. I can download Ignition Deck e-commerce that I can download. And it also comes with a free 500 framework theme. So I want to show you uh, also some of the other themes that you can check out. If you do want to make the thing look more beautiful, if you want to have a really good looking crowdfunding platform, you can just go and check out some of the other themes that Ignition Deck has to offer. There is Stellar, Fundify, CrowdPress. And these are pretty low cost um, compared to if you were to hire a developer to set up an entire new crowdfunding website, it's pretty low cost here. And I also think it's a good way to, to prototype the site. So in terms of the... 500 classic theme if you want to see what that looks like uh, right now we're viewing 500 classic this is the demo theme so you can see here the campaign you have the goal you can learn more about that campaign you have the funding meters etc so this is a very bare bones crowdfunding website very simple to set up and also if you want a, more of a, a, a professional looking kind of theme you can also do that by installing one of these and finally before we get started i also want to highlight that ignition deck does have a lot of good text step-by-step -step instructions as to how to install this so if you get if you get lost at any point in time you can go and check out their uh, quick start resources and they also have some video walkthroughs etc if you want to do that with this video, I'm pretty much showing you how I am going to set up the platform on my own site so you can just see how simple it is to get things up and running. And then you can have your very own crowdfunding website, which we're going to show you in just a second. Okay, so we are ready now to begin to install the crowdfunding functionality for this website. Right now, I'm in the WordPress admin dashboard here. Really very basic, simple. I haven't done anything yet. Um, only thing I've done is I've activated the site. So if we go to the site now, this is what it would look like. I just want to show you real quick so that you have an idea. It literally just looks like a blog. And this is the standard theme that comes with WordPress. So what we're going to be doing now is installing the crowdfunding WordPress plugin, the Ignition Deck Commerce plugin, and also the 500 framework theme so we can begin to get this up and running. And in addition, there are some other extensions that you can use to expand the functionality here. Um, Ignition Deck Social, Stretch Goals, FAQ, you have to purchase some of these, etc. So if you want to extend the functionality, you can do it that way. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to install this crowdfunding plugin. And you can see I've already downloaded here. So I'm going to go back here to the dashboard. I'm going to go to plugins. And I'm going to click Add New. And the reason I really want to do this in real time, uh, we're also going to click here, upload plugin. Um, there are some other free plugins available. You can browse the marketplace on WordPress, but we're going to upload the plugin. While it uploads, I want to say one thing here. And that's the fact that when we are uploading a new WordPress website, I think there's this expectation that like everything should be perfect or you're launching a new web version website and it's like everything should be perfect. But actually in reality, a lot of it is figuring out how to do it. <laughs> you know, a lot of it is figuring out how this stuff works and uh, how to troubleshoot as you go, Googling error messages or Googling things that come about that you don't know what to do next. And that's just kind of the reality of the situation. Okay, so this has been installed, but as is standard with WordPress, once you install a plugin, it doesn't activate the plugin, it just installs it. So we're gonna have to activate the plugin a little bit later, but first I'm gonna install the other plugin um, that we got here for the commerce theme or for the, the commerce. So this is the, the commerce plugin that's going to add payment functionality to the site and allow us to basically collect payments and do payouts and all that kind of stuff. Um, so when that installs, the next step in this process is going to be to install the 500 theme, which gives the look and feel to the site. So again, this was installed. It was not activated. If we go here to plugins um, in a second, we should be able to see 
the different installed plugins that we just did. Yes, okay, so Ignition Deck Commerce, this is installed. Ignition Deck Crowdfunding, this is installed. But again, these are both not activated. These other ones here, um, this is just anti-spam. This is like the, the howdy thing, I believe, that you can change this message. And the Mojo Marketplace, that's part of Bluehost, what they offer, some of the other widgets and things that you can buy from Bluehost if you decide to host with them. Okay, so now we're going to install the theme. The theme is the look and feel of the website, the design, etc. I actually already have it installed here because I was doing this earlier. But basically, what you would do is you would just click Upload. And again, similar to the plugins, you would just click Upload Theme. You would just hit the zip file, which you downloaded from the, the dashboard with Ignition Deck. And then you would upload it there. And then it's going to look like this. It's going to have your 500 Frameworks theme right here. So we have three of the things installed. And I, I actually purposely wanted to leave one of these out just to show you what a troubleshoot might look like because this is really common. It's very rare, I think, you, you follow everything to a T. So what, what we're going to do is we're going to activate both of these plugins and we're going to see what happens. So the first, I'm going to activate the Commerce plugin. Uh-oh, Ignition Deck Commerce requires installation of the Ignition Deck framework prior to activation. Click here to install. So basically what happened was we installed crowdfunding, commerce, and 500, but we forgot to install the framework. Oh no. So this is something that's really common. You know, I've, I've run into error messages as I install these sites. So we're going to click here and it's going to take us to what we next, what we need to do next. And basically this is saying you, you're an idiot. You forgot to install Ignition Deck crowdfunding and commerce framework. So now you have to do it. So I just hit the install thing and it's gonna install in a second. Whoop, it's installed. And then we're gonna click activate because we're gonna be activating each of these plugins because like I said, it installs but doesn't activate. So there, I think the, um, the power behind this is it's very simple and easy to do. This is something that doesn't take a tremendous amount of time. And this is something where um, as you're going, it's very easy to see how you can begin to expand the functionality of the site, etc. So I'm going to start to activate these different plugins now. So the Ignition Deck Commerce plugin here, it's going to activate in just a second. So now that one is activated. And the Ignition Deck Crowdfunding. So we're going to activate that in a second. Sweet. So you can see down here we have Ignition Deck and the Ignition Deck Commerce. All right, all right. We're going to now enable the Ignition Deck theme. I'm going to start to walk you through the dashboard items. The main takeaway that I want you to have from this overview is that you feel more confident going about making your own crowdfunding website. This is not going to be a complete step-by-step -step overview. You know, I'm not going to walk you through literally all of the functionality I'm just going to give you an idea of what you can do with this plugin, and I'm also going to give you an idea of how easy it is to set up a crowdfunding website. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go to the Ignition Deck tab. This is sort of the home base for the functionality. I've already skipped ahead a little bit here. I put in my license keys for the Ignition Deck crowdfunding uh, plugin and also the Ignition Deck e-commerce plugin. Those are two things you're going to have to do in order to get the full functionality out of them. Then there's a little bit of a checklist item here. You can go and activate Theme 500, the free theme that comes with Ignition Deck. You can configure Ignition Deck, the crowdfunding, and the uh, the e-commerce plugins. You can create your first project, etc. So I'm going to walk you through some of this. There are also modules here that you can use to further expand the functionality of Ignition Deck. So some of the modules here are Helix. This is sort of a sexy navigational tool that I'll show you in a little bit. There's Anonymous Checkout, Google eCommerce, a few of these different things. I'll let you guys look through this on your own time. And then there's the very important item where if you do want support, you can go here and look at the, the documentation uh, for Ignition Deck. This is really a, the best way to get up to speed. You just have to spend some time, like an hour, looking through the various steps to do this. But aside from that, I think it's really simple. Um, so the one thing I want to look at, let's go to the theme here. 
This theme is the free one that comes with Ignition Deck. You can also invest in more premium ones that look really professional. I am not a designer myself. As you know from my own website, crowdcrux.com, it's not the best designed. So I tend to, to go with more premium themes when I'm setting up a new website. This is just a very, very basic looking kind of crowdfunding site. You have the two projects that I've created here as sample projects. You can change the website identity, the title. You can change the coloring of the, the actual crowdfunding website. All these different things you can change here in the customization dashboard. But I just want to quickly show you how you can create a project. Then I'm going to go through one or two other things. And then I'm going to leave it up to you guys because I do want some questions from this video. So let's see here. If we're adding a new project, we're just gonna make this really random. Random projecto. Adding some stuff here. We can say whether or not this is an open or closed campaign. We can set the fundraising date. You can set the goal. Let's see, 300, random. Ooh, that's a lot. <laughs> uh, I can do some of these things, fill out. This would be a video embed code, the pitch video that you would include. You can have different reward levels and the pricing of them. You can also have a featured image which would show up um, to make it look more appealing. So there's a lot of different stuff here. I'll let you guys check out on your, own, on your own time and then we could just publish that and it's gonna be published as a new project. So I'll show you very quickly what that would look like on the site. It's again, very basic guys, basic bare bones looking here. And if we were to click this one, it's gonna come up. If there was a video embed, it would go here. We have the when the project ends, you could have it support now, we would need an image here. So there are different ways you can obviously improve the, the look of this, but that's sort of the bare bones functionality. Okay, so I wanna show you guys two more things really quickly, and then I wanna get into what actually matters when um, you're starting a new crowdfunding website. So the first thing is, how do you do payment processing? That's a that's a really common question that I get. How do you accept payments from random people online? And that's a good question. You would literally just go into the Ignition Deck Commerce uh, plugin, and it has a lot of different functionality. So if you wanted to direct people to a particular download link, if you wanted to create receipts, if you wanted to integrate with MailChimp, customize the user dashboard, all that kind of stuff is gonna be found under the Commerce plugin for Ignition Deck. And in addition, there are payment gateways. So it actually isn't super complicated at all. You pretty much just choose which payment gateways that you want to include, whether it's PayPal or Stripe to do debit and credit card processing, you would just use the payment gateways section of this plugin to be able to do that. And it's as simple as a click of a button. So there, there's no worry here. You might have to follow a few you know, steps to, in order to enable this, but it's not as big uh, or not as monumental as you might think. The other thing I want to show you here was what would happen if we enabled one of these modules. So these different modules, as I said earlier, expand the functionality of your site. If we enable the Helix module, you'll see what that looks like in just a second. So I'm opening up a new tab. And the Helix module created this little guy and you can see all the different stuff for your account and dashboard. So it makes it look really cool. It's, it's really slick functionality, very simple to implement. So you can activate or deactivate that. The last final question that I get about setting up an entirely new crowdfunding website is how do I make it so that I set up the website? You know, I, it's, it looks way better than this. <laughs> you know, I have, I have a really nice theme installed. How do I get it so that people can submit projects? Like from a front end user interface, people can easily submit and create a project on my crowdfunding website. Now, before I go into this, I just wanna preface that in order to get a developer, to hire a developer to do this, it would cost a lot of money because there's a lot of time and functionality that goes into it. With Ignition Deck, the license that I have, which is the Echelon license, I'll show you guys here. There are two products, Echelon and Enterprise. The Echelon license does not include front end submission. The Echelon one, I believe is also $99. Uh, and if you want to expand it, you have to get a, a $99 theme. And then some of the other plugins, if you wanted to, you could do that. Um, so this does not include front end submission. 
there is a janky way by janky i mean kind of uh, get a way to do it like you can figure out how to allow people to submit their own projects but it's not very nice looking basically when people registered for your site it would look very similar to this kind of registration dashboard and then people would submit their project and you would have to approve it uh, so it's not as intuitive and they would also get access to a lot of data you don't want them to see. So it's not the best solution. I think honestly, the best solution is the enterprise version. And I know that it's it's definitely more of a high priced version. Let's go here. So right now at the time I'm recording this, this is $449, which is a little bit more than obviously the $99 investment. But at the same time, you do get a free theme of your choice. So you can make the thing look really professional and choose from all the different themes that I talked about earlier. And it's only going to be $449. And I know that sounds like a lot, but honestly, if you were to get someone to code this kind of a site, it would cost at least 10 times that um, for this type of functionality. And as you can see here, you would get user submitted projects. So visitors can easily register for accounts and start submitting projects. You can charge project fees, backer profiles, all of this kind of stuff you're gonna get with the enterprise version front end submission forms that look really nice and don't look like they're just kind of thrown together. So that's the answer to that question. If you do want a full blown crowdfunding website, something that has all of the functionality of a traditional crowdfunding website, you are going to have to invest in the enterprise version of Ignition Deck. If you're just looking to raise money for yourself or you're just prototyping, you want something really bare bones, you can just go with the Echelon copy and you'll get a lot of great functionality out of the box. I would, however, recommend investing in a premium theme because you guys can see that this one doesn't look all that great. Um, obviously, I could include photos. I could make this look better. I could have better um, coloring, and I could even include my own CSS. For those of you not familiar, that's a cascading style sheet to design the site, um, but I would have to also have to hire someone to, to create that code so that it made it look better. I think the best bang for your buck is quite simply the enterprise solution because you do get that free theme. And of course, you also then get the front end functionality. The last thing I wanna say here is that this is not a step-by-step -step tutorial. If you do want more step-by-step -step kind of information, go out there to the Ignition Deck website, go in the documentation and you can see all of the information that they have out here the blog posts, the videos, et cetera, that will walk you through how to set up your own crowdfunding website. And I have to say, just before I sign off, that the functionality of a site is not what makes it differentiated, at least not in this point in time. Um, there are so many crowdfunding websites out there, and it is now so simple to set up your own crowdfunding website that people can do it in literally an hour or a few hours. It doesn't take a lot of time. It doesn't even take a lot of money, as you've seen. So the core differentiator is actually your marketing. The hard thing about starting a new crowdfunding website is not the functionality. The hard thing is getting users on your site getting people to create projects, getting people to support projects on the site and to come back to your site <clears throat> after they've supported at least one of them. That is the hard part. And that is what I'll be talking a little bit more about in the future. But if you did enjoy this video, I invite you to subscribe. If you have any questions, I would invite you to leave this, uh, the question in the comment section down below. And finally, if you did get some value out of this tutorial, give me a thumbs up just so I know. And as always, I'll see you next time.